In Gigabyte Suite, the emphasis is on different uses for Thunderbolt. Now, we've been able to do storage for a while, and you know, you can talk about storage all day, but now let's talk about something different. So the Z77X UP5TH is the world's only dual Thunderbolt motherboard, has two Thunderbolts built, Thunderbolt ports built right into the back of it, and what I'd like you guys to notice first about this demo system is the fact that there is no video card in it. So we are outputting to four 1080p displays as a bit of a 4K simulation, if you will, over here on the left from the onboard graphics. So this is native 4K content that you can see here. And we're using a couple of adapters so we can take those mini Thunderbolts. Remember guys, the Thunderbolt connector does carry a DisplayPort signal and we can split it out to multiple DisplayPorts in order to achieve this kind of a huge resolution. So the reason for this solution with the Ergotron stand and four DisplayPort monitors is right now it's pretty hard to get your hands on a 4K display, but it proves the point of what it is capable of doing in the near future. Now Thunderbolt, again, like I said, not just about storage anymore. Check this out. So this is the Blackmagic design. I believe it is the Ultra Studio Express. And this guy is a Thunderbolt capture card. So you're able to actually capture footage on your notebook or your desktop that's equipped with a Thunderbolt port. It is PC compatible, not just Mac. So it's not limited to just the Apple users anymore. And this is something that Diesel's very excited about. He's actually had this camera on pre-order for months now. This is Blackmagic's new cinema camera. It is a 2.5K camera, and again, it does not use Thunderbolt, but it does use display port out, so that's one of the other reasons they've had it on demo here. Now, Diesel clarified a point for me, and that is that it comes with $1,000 software just for scopes, and it can actually output scope and waveform data. So I was a little bit incorrect there. This is a Thunderbolt port. You can see it's clearly labeled Thunderbolt. And I got a little confused because I found out the port is for monitoring only. However, it does not just output display data, which is what makes it not just display port. It is capable of daisy chaining and it is outputting some additional data as well. Now, with some of the improvements Intel's made in terms of thermals and power efficiency over the last few years, we've seen a huge number of solutions that are allowing us to shrink performance computing down to smaller and smaller sizes. This is a regular mini ITX board. This is a Z77 board with a PCIe 16X slot, and it's now capable of running a very powerful gaming machine. The only thing you can't do on a board this size, it seems these days, is run dual graphics. However, not content to leave it at that, Intel has, and Gigabyte has implemented, a new standard. So this is a thin mini ITX. They've got a couple of boards, B75 as well as H77. So the B75 is obviously more business oriented. We're going to focus on that one. They're pretty much the same layout, so it's just a chipset change. And what this is, is it is a, well, thinner version of mini ITX. So it's got the same mounting holes, but you can see the IO plate is much, much flatter. And there's a very good reason for that. It is meant for all-in-one do-it-yourself. So you can build your own all-in-one PC. Now, Gigabyte has a couple of unique implementations here. So number one is we're using SODIMM, so that's part of the spec. You can see there's built-in power. So power comes in from the back from a, from a power brick as opposed to using a normal power supply with a fan that we're used to seeing for a desktop PC. They've also got mini PCIe for your wireless card as well as mSATA. So you'll have the option of either using an SSD mount in the all-in-one enclosure, or you can throw an MSATA SSD on there. Maybe you use it for caching and you throw a hard drive in. Uh, there's a PCIe 4X slot. Now, I don't expect you to be able to use that with a card sticking out of it, because I'm going to show you guys what it looks like once it's in the AIO. But there are PCI Express extension cables, so if someone implemented an AIO where you could actually run a graphics card, that would be pretty cool. So I'm going to turn this around. You guys probably had no idea that this isn't a fully built computer already. This, well it is a fully built computer already, was a custom fully built computer. So there are several manufacturers launching these DIY capable all-in-ones. They come with the thermal solution. They come with the power brick that you need because this is all standardized for this thin mini ITX 
uh, configuration. You can see there's a Kingston M SATA card here. There's a PCI mini PCI Express wireless card. Got some memory going. And one of the most notable things about this is the fact that e no matter what the machine is doing, these heat pipes stay quite cool. We saw a demo before the video actually started where they were running some intensive programs, and these are barely warm to the touch. Now, like I said before, you don't have to stick with M SATA. They do also have, as part of the standard, the ability to mount drives in it. So you can see you can throw a three and a half inch drive there. And this particular model right here, and I would expect most of them now that uh, Windows 8 is past, is, well not past, but is the present and the future, is multi-touch ready. So you can actually, here if we go and uh, fire up MS Paint, which should be around here somewhere. Oh, that's Notepad. That's okay. We can find paint. We're good at this. We've done this before. And swiping and paint. Okay, am I going to need an, uh, my, my lovely assistant to come in here and sort of use her five fingers so that we can show that it is accepting 10 inputs all at the same time? And, of course, there's some evolutions to the desktop boards. Now, because Intel or AMD are not launching any new chipsets or any new CPUs here at CES, we don't have a whole refresh or anything like that, but Gigabyte is introducing the HD series. So these are Z77 boards that are aimed at the value segment, and what's different about these compared to other boards is the fact that they're coming in at very aggressive price points, and they do feature DisplayPort, hence the HD designation. So you don't have some of the bells and whistles like, you know, 16 phase power or your four-way SLI capability or any of that stuff but if you're looking to build a basic machine it's still got USB 3 it's uh, actually four ports of USB 3 that's part of the Z77 spec it's still crossfire ready it does support dual graphics and you've got DisplayPort out on board so it means you can take advantage of the features of Z77 without sort of going over the top in terms of the price and in terms of the expense of manufacturing so obviously if you're gonna bring a motherboard to market at a lower price it has to cost less to manufacture so that is why they've gone for something like the slimmer motherboard design so you can see you can save a little bit on the PCB right here but it still does require a standard ATX case to install we've seen this many times in the past on value-oriented boards don't miss any of our CES 2013 coverage by making sure that you're subscribed to Linus Tech Tips. North American customers might not be as familiar with them as some other territories, but Gigabyte also has a variety of notebook, tablet, and all-in-one solutions on display here at the show. So we have a Windows 8 tablet with a Celeron processor that actually has a dock that allows you to add an optical drive as well as additional expansion. They have a convertible Ultrabook, so this guy rotates around and becomes a tablet, should you see fit. They've also got, this is a fairly unique solution, so this is a magnetic dock as well as a stand that that pops out of the back of this particular tablet to make it more like, uh, you know, more competitive with something like Microsoft Surface. They've also got a couple more displays on here, so this is just another Ultrabook and sort of a more performance-oriented looking gaming machine here in, um, in a matte black finish. This has a GTX 660M, so it's going to be quite powerful and actually not as thin as some of the other notebooks that we've seen with maybe a GTX 670 or 680, so that's a compromise that you have to decide if you're willing to make. Now, behind me over here, we've got their new lineup of all-in-ones, so these are fully compliant with the Windows 8 experience, and what you might notice about these ones is the fact that there is absolutely no Gigabyte branding on them whatsoever. So these are intended for the white box market, which refers to sort of a distributor, or a system integrator or a retailer who wants to develop their own all-in-one and do their own branding behind it. So Gigabyte's basically providing the motherboard, the chassis itself, and the screen itself, and there's no, there isn't gonna be a Gigabyte name on it. So what you might wanna make a habit of doing is, well, not so much, okay, but not make a habit of, but check these out. Sort of look at the industrial design of them, and if you see something that looks like these particular models here, you'll know who actually built it, which, I mean, might give you more confidence in the case of you're going, okay, look, well, this is a fairly inexpensive AIO. Do I trust this thing or not? Who made this? At least you'll know that it was actually manufactured by Gigabyte with their expertise. So don't miss any of our CES 2013 coverage by making sure that you're subscribed to Linus Tech Tips. Quite honestly, we missed this one our first time around because it looked like a normal 24-inch all-in-one. It sort of 
from the front. There's like, you know, a webcam and a bezel and sort of nothing that seems out of the ordinary. But then when you get around to the back, you find a two and a half inch expansion drive slot. So that means you can quickly and easily expand the storage of the device. And uh, Diesel and I are going to switch places over here. I'd like him to come check out this side of the unit where the real magic happens. So it's actually not that thick, but check that out at the bottom. You can install a full-sized graphics card in this all-in-one PC. The, uh, the example that they've had running, so internally they've had running as high as a GTX 680 off of this machine. So you actually have the capability now of taking the all-in-one form factor, albeit a little bit thicker, and having what would essentially be a full-size gaming desktop performance out of it.